Uh, against Bea, Kali, Suyu, yeah, yeah, they go, nice they go mask. Mask. That's the safest route, uh, route I would say. Uh, three purple heroes on the uh, last last phase. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good observation. Yeah, yeah that's nice. uh, you know that's a sign of Ube that they still have. Yeah, inherited. That, that's not a joke. That's an actual thing. It's it's yes. it's the same. It's the same roster. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's a here's the index here. Can you guys explain this a little bit before we go? Well, uh, you, you, I, I would first. say early game F cap clear cut. But if the, this uh, if Aurora gets a form of momentum in the early game, then they just win mid game. Yeah, Falcon's AP Brand just really needs to pressure the jungle, and uh, Ogren and Flap really need to work out their timings in terms of who's gonna front and who's gonna go dive. Because if you mess that up, that Aurora lineup can punish them hard. Well, it's a very crucial game one. It will determine momentum. Throw it over to Naisu and Inga. And here we are. And here we are. Well, welcome to Mobile Legends. And here we are, jumping into the land of dawn. Game, well, I should say game number one in this first, a best of seven that we're going to see unfold here for us. Aegon, nice through to bring you the action here. I know we have a really loud crowd here, and I hope you can hear me, Aegon, because I'm looking to hear you. You know, nice through. I do agree with the panel. Again, Falcons, AP Bren, they do have a good potential to dominate the early game. But let's see, because so far the Alpha and the Matilda, like what they're doing right now with the pass on to Ogwen, that's going to give Ogwen, even with a Khaled that can be dominant in the first five minutes, you know, it can be hard for Falcons, AP Bren. So let's see how's the rotation going to go for both of these teams for game number one. Okay, so here we are. We're going to have to wait for this to unfold again as they're trying to get their paces going here. One of the big things about this, though, and I like that they talked about this, is, you know, the, the potential for that early game that can happen, of course, for FCAP, and also paying attention to where Demon Kite goes. They got to be able to put pressure on the jungle. They got to be able to work towards that as well. Because right now, based on this lineup and everything else, Rora, if they get to that mid game, they're going to find a good spike. They have a ton of utility to work with. Well, speaking of working with, they're trying to work on Few. But Few manages to turn things around and take two. Demon Kite and Renage will fall down. The overaggression of the Aurora was capitalized by Falcon's AP Bren. Now, that's a strong start, actually, the panel was referring to. Because, again, we all know that when you have a Calidrome, as much as possible, you want to invade the jungle like what oakland has been doing. Don't give Demon Kite a good time, because so far, Demon Kite has been performing phenomenal all throughout the season, all throughout the playoffs. And if he gets his groove right, especially with the assistance of Renegade on the Matilda, Aurora can easily turn things around. But right now, Kyle TZ is working on it. But the stone is well cooked. They're going to catch someone there as... Kyle TZ gets oh. the first turtle. Here comes the clash. Demon Kite has to walk away the Spear of Alka, but Edward, though, might be sad with uh -oh. the Raging Sandstorm. Gonna get ganked up by four, and now a diversion for few onto the middle lane. Man, good, uh, good response, I would say. Not only that, but also you get the objective to work around from, and this is what we were saying. You know, with the early game potential from FCAP's lineup is going to be quite devastating for Roar to deal with. They've got to be able to adjust to it. Look at this pressure on Demon Kite. And just look at Ogwen. Okay, he has the flicker. Now here comes the Raging Sands from US Stone from him just to make sure to punish Ogwen. Ogwen's over aggression. And so far, Falcon's AP Prince still had the lead, but a heads up play from Yue as they as Aurora gets up a kill. And here comes the Circle oh. Eagle. They want to go right after Pew, and they're going to bring them down. Next target might be Flapteezy, but a flicker is there to save Flapteezy. So hey. they get on the board. You know, at least you have that. Uh, Again, it's it's mainly for Rora to go ahead and build up what they can in the early game. Just kind of deal with it. They know that the strength also mid-game potential is going to be there. It was so much focus as well on Domang right here. You want to be able to scale that up, get the Mozcom where you need to be if you're Domang. And that's why, again, a lot of the pressure is going to be on FCAP to get that control of the early game, make things work the way they want to, and secure all the objectives. And they have, like I said, a ton of utility to help them out. The Beatrix has been slowly, you know, coming back to, uh, I would say, meta, but not as much as some of the other gold laners. Still very valuable in a lot of the lineup that is going to be shown here from FCAP. Whether that's a Raging Sandstorm being set up from Ogwin or a Flap TZ, who, again, this Barretts has popped up a couple times now for the playoffs, surprisingly so. 
lot of pressure here once again. Purple buff. Demon Kite's going to be fine. Relying on the team. Wow. Renna J, though, he'll take quite a few shots. But the thing is, for Falcons AP Brand, they have so much kit to actually go for neutral objectives and uh, give Demon Kite a hard time to try and even contest this. Look at this. Black Daisy goes in again with the Demon Kite. Oh. as welcome. Okay, Spirit Destruction won't connect, but this time, look at Fuse. Dispersion rotation going to connect onto three. Demon Kite and Renna J has to walk away because four oh, members no. are here. Here comes Owen. With the Raging Sandstorm, Edward's gonna be able to oh. escape though, as Kyle TZ gets the turtle, and now gonna bring down you and you and Edward. So so far, Falcons AP Brandon, their re-engage, re-initiation yeah. is doing wonders for them. It's very strong, right? And that's what you really have to look at with the lineup here. Where how they can go ahead, force what looks like it's gonna be a fight, but then go ahead and kind of disengage, and then you'll see that re-engage as well. It was a good attempt too. You know, UA brought in that Raging Sandstorm himself. He utilized that, but unfortunately for Aurora, they just don't have enough firepower just yet. So if they're playing to the tune or the pace of FCAP, oh, whoa, Renegade, again. Look how much damage he is actually taking here. And that's the whole point. You know, they have great utility. They have great yeah. mobility around the map, but they kind of, it's literally like taking a buckle and just buckling in for now. Yeah, and if you're gonna talk about utility, oh, okay, speaking of utility, there's the catch coming in from Flap. Teezy serving them up to Super Marco Edward. All of a sudden, will be bursted down. No response from Aurora. And Falcons AP Brand is really on the driver's seat, controlling the pace, controlling the rotation. And speaking of kit, okay, when it comes to the Lords later on, as Domin picks up a turret, the thing is for Falcons AP Brand, even if you don't mind the other three players, just focus on Kyle TZ and Flap. TZ oh. alone circling Eagle. They want to go right after oh. a few flickers out right on time, saves himself. <laughs> now Owen wants to answer right back. Super Marco is here. He's changing up his gear now. Will they go for the counter attack? And Smart oh, Missiles will catch you away. Expert Missiles to bring down you away. That's got to be so tough. Hang on. I mean, you're, you're what should have been a kill, or you're looking, you know, just one hit away to at least get some more momentum building in your favor for Aurora. They can't get that. And then the counter punch comes in from FCAP. So Aurora will, you know, it looks like they're kind of trying to make these plays happen because they already lost control of the early game. And that's fine if they can make it happen, though. If not, again, they're in for a long ride here. Last turtle of the game is up, and it looks like they're going to be full force to fight this one and possibly contest it. Oh, Demon Kite goes in with a spear of Alpha. Flap TZ don't try to soak up the damage as Demon Kite this time will get. But look at this the dispersion rotation coming in from Pugh. Going to catch three. Wow. And there's the diversion play. They want to go for the back line. They might catch it anyway, though. Yui with the dash out. Here comes Pugh. Trying to chase oh. over the two. Yui has to use the Raging Sandstorm to walk away, but still going to catch up and Super Marco! Doing Super Mac Mac things with the Renner's Apathy. 100% accuracy. Let's take another look at that. All right, Infinix, since the replay, that's not what we were looking for, but hey, every single person on FCAP's lineup did what they had to do. And to a T, because Rora getting wiped out this early on is not a good sign for game one. You know, I, we, we've been trying to explain a couple of things, but there's it seems like there's no time, Naisu. Because once we're, we're getting to our point, something happens. So I think the panel has to explain how crazy Falcons AP Brent has been performing. Looking at the KDAs, Super Marco remains bulletproof, 4 0 1, picks up a Malefic Roar. We've seen the effect of One Runner's Apathy connecting is already detrimental, deadly. Yeah. And with that Malefic Roar, you can expect Super Marco to burst out any member of Aurora at this point. And Super Marco is obviously there, but even a big part of this is just Few. Few is exactly. one of the few players, like we always mention, when the Lu Yi comes through and it slips through the draft. It, again, the panel mentioned this, that it was picked up you know, earlier on than maybe we see in the past. but. Nonetheless, it's few, and off the top of my head, I think Super Friends as well that just love this pick. They are so devastating with it. So, I mean, whether it's a diversion or not, it's just the hassle for Aurora of being like, all right, where are they coming from? And even if we try to retreat or disengage, we don't know. Like, it, there's too many angles that FCAP's lineup can take. And, I mean, I'm not even talking about Ogwin. Like, he can literally just... Sandstorm over a wall if he wants to and cut them off. Here we okay, go. Here comes Daytona's welcome. Another catch, but the Raging Sandstorm going to connect on to all the members of Aurora. They want to go for a Demon Kai, but Demon Kai has to back away now. Going to work on the top lane turret. Renegade and Edward again. Not a good sign for those two players. They suffered another death. 
And they're gonna pop the holy shields up top as Doming tries to work down bottom. Okay, another diversion. Oh, they're going for Doming. Oh, they're going for Doming though. Run, Doming! Spear of destruction. Will it connect to Suyu though? It did! <laughs> he was able to escape! Oh man. But Kaltese is gonna get the Lord, might be able to get catch on to Doming. Wow! Doming was able to escape. That was a big brain play from a big brain player. Would have been way cooler if somehow we got the lore too, you know? Yeah, but that's too much. We, <laughs> we still got to talk about the facts. They're still down 9,000 gold. Great escape, Doming. But again, you're going to have to deal with the Lord pushing in. And with this kind of power lead that FCAP has, it, it's going to be tough here for Aurora. They might look to end the game here on that first Lord push as they focus down the tier two turrets and everything else. Couple holy shields still up, but Rora has the work cut out for them. Lord now on the top side. Okay, seems like they're gonna burst down the top, inhibit their turrets, and Aurora will focus up on bursting down this Lord. Falcon's AP Brandon, look at the immense gold lead. That's 11.1K, literally taking a, a page out of the book of Fnatic Onyx with the fast games and dominant starts they've been portraying right now. Circling oh. Eagle coming in from Brendan J. Another catch coming from Flap Teasy. Raging Sandstorm for Ogwin. Just to zone out. He got the dispersion rotation coming in from Few. As Super Marco picks up a kill onto Brendan J. And they're going to work on the minions. They really want to force out another inhi inhibitor turret takedown. Okay, so they stay in the game. They at least don't have an end just yet, but FCAP, like I said, massive lead at this point. Rora, what do they have to do to possibly turn this around? Well, number one, withstand this assault because they're going still for the mid lane, even without a Lord. Still gonna work on it. Oh! Super Marco! That's not even the ultimate! That's just a normal basic attack from the Renner! Wow! Gonna bring down Domain, also mid lane hit with their turret now working on the bottom. They don't even need the Lord, I think. They can actually end this with a beautiful clash. All the ultimates there are is. here. Ogwin goes in with a raging stats or flicker combination. They're bursting down Edward. They have minions. Here comes Marco with the render once again. Gonna bring down Brother J as well. Next is Demon Kai and Falcons AP Bren. Breezes through the first game. They breeze on through game number one. They just went in, stomp, and I'm not talking about the Barons here. Talk about a game number one, dominant as ever. Falcons AP, Bren, Aurora, gonna have to make a huge adjustment after this one. Can't wait to hear what Rockheart, Renmar, and Midnight have to say about game number one. Let's throw it over to them. You know what? I really like that we have our boy here, Naisu, willing to throw out words like that. Yeah. You don't use that word a lot. It's a stomp, bro. Stomp! Simple as that. And it really began in the first two, three minutes of it all. I mean, yeah. we, we laid down the condition. Falcons AP Bren needed to get that early win, needed to get that early skirmish. Yep. Um, and they got it. That quite forced, although it really looked good for Aurora to try and catch out few in the mid, but he was able to flick her out in time, and then they just got sucked in by the rotation dispersion, and that was instant two kills. That was the early game condition of Aurora gone. That's true. Again, foiled by the man with the plan. This guy in the mid lane, what it is few who does feel like he can do anything at this point. 5-1-15, Brockhart. And that, that was a relatively short game as well. Yeah, that was uh, that was intense. Uh, what Falcons AP Brand showed up here, and if they are not gonna go gentle into this good night, if they are gonna be saying good night here, they're it's like this was like a heat check on Terror. It's like you guys want to play early. Oh, this is how we play early. We'll remind you why the World Tour went on for so long, uh, for s such a. <laughs> For so many tournaments all around the world. And Aurora, um, they found glimpses, but which came from the most obvious target, which would be Ogwin and Few around the mid lane around there. But it was just a story of multiple attempts to get more kills failing. And because they couldn't get the victory in the mid, the side lane suffered. Super Marco got to farm. Flap Teasy was a nuisance, bringing back an old favorite, uh, the one of his favorite picks in M2, the Barretts. It was just, this was classic Falcons AP Bren. It's very classic. At the same time, there's a bit of a flavor that you don't really expect that much anymore in the draft. Ooh. Specifically, this Barretts. Look at that combo by Kyle Teasy and, of course, Renner's apathy there by Super Marco really demolished literally obliterated a single target and one thing that i actually was surprised about this lineup was that aoe bro they, they hit multiple targets with 
with ferocity. They hit so yeah. hard. It's like every time that uh, the Barretts gets a catch, well, when they'd be able to get a bite onto someone, it's like Flap TZ isn't afraid. Uh, once they got to the point where they were fighting 5v5, um, Flap TZ would just stand there. Yeah, he'll be taking damage from Aurora, but Aurora can't even get that close, lest they suffer the Bennett's Rage coming in, the grenade launcher hits coming in. And That's, I like yeah. the itemization of Super Marco real quick. Um, he went instantly for the Hunter Strike, BOD, knowing that they spiked, and so that they could stop the power spike if ever Aurora would get there, immediately went for the Malefic Roar. He went with Heptasis last. And then later on for the Barret, one of the reasons he got tanky, good itemization as well with the Radiance Armor and the Dominant Size. Funnily enough, these are games that you kind of want to go for Sky Piercer, and Super Marco was no frills, no fuss, no coconuts. Yeah. He just got, <laughs> we got, he went straight up in the business. Yeah, uh, pure business here. Um, even though at some point you could have argued, hey Marco, come on, show us a little bit of Sky Piercer, maybe yeah. for the second, maybe for, for, maybe for the third. But then now nah, he was just like, no, I will stick to this item build here. Uh, this is what we need. They needed a little bit more penetration. They needed that extra 25% or 20% damage boost after hitting a uh, target within a specific threshold from the BOD. So it was just a great itemization uh, from Super Marco. And again, you need to do that against a lineup that really wants to dive and also scales super well. Yep. I was actually uh, a bit concerned that Doming was getting a little out of hand despite you know, a very dominant performance here by Falcon's AP brand. But you know what? They shut that down relatively quickly as well. Yeah. 11 minutes and Domeng did not get a chance to do any free hits at all. Yeah, and what I would appreciate about the performance of Falcon's AP brand here is uh, those three kills that Aurora got, they went back to the idea of, okay, we need to trade it. But lately, Falcon's AP brand, especially in their series against Fnatic on in Philippines, it looks like uh, they were there were lapses. This wasn't the cleanest game overall by Falcon's AP brand, mm -hmm. but it's close to the standard that they want to have for themselves in terms of like how cleanly they were able to get the win. Yeah. However, one thing that I'm seeing that maybe Aurora is seeing as well that they can really uh, pinpoint on for the next games is the aggression of Ogwen 